Good evening, Dragon Con. It is 11.30 on Saturday night. Do I not get a better reception than that? Y'all are in here avoiding the party to come and have a really informed, really educational, and slightly disturbing topic for conversation. I want to thank everybody for coming out on Saturday night. I want everybody to go and say, give themselves a nice round of applause. So, a couple of words of warning. We are going to go through a lot of probably potentially disturbing topics. We are probably going to make a few smart ass comments, i.e. me. But understand, everything we're talking about here, everything we say, everything we do is done with very purposeful intent. We're doing this because this is an important topic. This is one that when it was brought to us, can you be on the panel, can you be here to do this, is one that I will tell you, pretty much everybody looked and said, you're insane to touch this. So I wanna say that I thank all of you guys coming out to listen to this conversation. If you're coming in for a misogynistic conversation about backlash to Me Too, that's not what this is. If you're coming out from a point of anger about Me Too, that's not what this is. We're coming out here to have a conversation because we know the bullshit that's been going on not for 10 years, not for 20 years, not for 50 years, not for the Weinstein age, not for the last 100 years. We understand where we're coming from. We understand where, where things have been. We understand the problems that there are. We're coming out to have a conversation about how do we start to develop a healthy, integrated society from everybody from a multitude of directions. Me Too is simply one perspective on the problem that has highlighted and brought to light something that has been a drastic issue for a very long time. We know that there are a number of people that are assholes in the world. We know there are people that mistreat, abuse, and do things wrong. That's not the majority of us. But every damn one of us that is in this room also, at some point in time, has done something we look, at, look back at now, especially based in a new light, a new context, and go and say, was that really right? Was that really appropriate? Should I have done something different? Did I have this? Did I have that? We all make mistakes. We're human. We're going to talk about some of that. But that's not what the Me Too movement's about. The Me Too movement is about assholes who use power, who use authority, who do illegal and coercive acts using power. And it's become a large movement. But that's not what the majority of us are here for. The majority of us have been impacted by a variety of things in our lives and the backlash of this movement has come out and affected us as a society. So what we want to do tonight is go and say, we know this has happened. Undoubtedly there's people in this room who have been affected by it in a very negative way. So don't take anything that any panelist says in a negative light because we're here to have this as a conversation. And I appreciate the fact that all of you have come out this evening. And again, this is a serious topic. We may make some light jokes. We may do a few things because it's Saturday night at Dragon Con and we want to have a little fun too. But again, part of that is also having the conversation because we want to help our people heal. That's part of why we have these cons. This is part of the reason we do these things. We can come underneath a group, a society, a background of beliefs because we have beliefs in fandom and knowledge and information and backgrounds. And this is a place that you can come express and be yourself that typically most people can't do in quote unquote open society. Oh, somebody cranked up my mic. Y'all are in trouble now. So, oh, you couldn't hear all that? I hope you don't expect me to repeat it because I don't remember it. <laughs> but anyway, I am Jim Nettles. I will be your moderator this evening and I will probably be running my mouth more than I should. Um, I am a fiction and a nonfiction author. I have worked in technology for better than 30 years. Um, I have worked in technology since I was a kid. Um, I have dealt with a lot of 
social media, a lot of high-end e-commerce applications. I also have a background in anthropology, study of people, study of culture, study of where we're at, study of history. So when I come from perspectives, I am the old fat white guy sitting on the top of this panel. I should be wearing a nice big target on my chest. I acknowledge that, I'm sitting here, and yet I'm sitting here as well for everybody in this crowd. So I'm gonna let the rest of my panelists introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Adrienne McDonald, and I am a coach. Um, I typically coach around intimacy issues. Most of my clients are heterosexual males in the age range of 35 to 55. Y'all heard that right. All right. So that is what I do. Um, I also do have a background in technology that I am desperately trying to forget, but yet it keeps haunting me for some reason. But that is why I am on this panel. Hello. Uh, I've been answered to many names, but currently I write under Dance Harden. Um, uh, science fantasy and blogging about geeky things on WordPress and uh, Facebook. Uh, in the 90s, I worked as a burlesque dancer traveling around the eastern United States. I had the company's first lesbian and cross-dressing routine. After that, I had a, um, an S&M show uh, out of Knoxville, Tennessee. We performed at the first at the Lollapalooza there in Newport in 1996. After that, I went to college. I studied psychology and social sciences and media studies. Now I work in the healthcare field and at night write and blog about all things geeky. So. And one more thing I'm going to throw out there. Was anybody in this room at our sex tech panel last year, this time, this time? I know a Thank couple you. of you guys were. Thank you for coming back and showing some love. Thank you. Yes, we did. And we will do so again. <laughs> Buy your panelists alcohol. So, all right, let's start with the first question. Um, and I'm going to throw this to my panelists. I'm not touching this one. So let's kind of set a baseline for where we are in a cultural basis. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to rewind just a bit. So the Me Too panel, um, for a lot of people, uh, Me Too in general was not really very common knowledge until last year when it came out with Harvey Weinstein and, and the crowd, right? But the Me Too has been going on since about, to, I think 2006 is when Taruna Burke started that effort. It came to mainstream, if you will, when Alyssa Milano tweeted out after the Harvey Weinstein stuff came about. But it was originally, the Me Too movement was to shed a light on um, sexual abuse in the community for those that are marginalized and not getting a lot of recognition. So I, I want to acknowledge that. Um, it's really taken off, time's up. Those types of hashtags are really trendy, but that is where it, it started from. Um, I think that uh, for, from my standpoint, um, when this came out, it was probably about a month after Dragon Con last year, um, when these accusations came out, that I started getting text screenshots and whatnot where my clients, because like I said, I mostly coach men, really started coming out with fear of, oh my God, what am I doing? This stuff's going on they would text me Snapchat uh, uh, screenshots of Twitter feeds of I don't really care if innocent men go down as long as the patriarchal society goes down. What do you think about this? And I'm like, well, I don't think that collectively moves us forward. Um, I think we need to have conversations. I, need to, I think that we need to have open communication and this is really not anything that we've not talked about before. It's just in a different particular light. So there, I think there is a lot of fear out there when it comes to the, the people that I coach, which are, like I said, primarily men. I think that um, pr prior to this uh, event, I went out and talked to, I did like little mini focus groups um, around different age dynamics, uh, a little bit younger, because I was curious to see if, it, if the dynamic was a little bit different there. 
and still a lot of fear but not only on the male side but also on um, the female side also in some of the trans community it's like we don't know what to do now because this stuff is coming up and we'd like to have conversations but there's this awkwardness so that's what I'm seeing um, but I again given the demographic that I coach there is a, a lot of fear there's also a lot um, not only in the about dating but also in the work environment uh, as well because there was a couple of um, people that are like now I don't know what to say at work now I'm worried about my career so it's it's had this effect in multiple different areas of people's lives and it's this I don't know what to say I don't know what to do I don't think I'm an asshole but I'm not sure that that's what I've seen how about yourself oh boy well yeah so life is complicated um, what I've seen is I mean the, in the job I have my day job I, I see it from both angles I've been falsely accused of sexual harassment and I've also been a victim of sexual assault I've experienced sexual harassment in the workplace but then also in the workplace been falsely accused um, and and yeah there's definitely that fear there's that paranoia there's that look, looking back and oh I grabbed that actor's ass a few years ago at Dragon Con that's probably a little assaulty um, and I think it just takes a lot of courage to look at your actions look at everybody else's and and have the courage to have these conversations mm -hmm. and the honesty to say that maybe my paranoia comes from guilt mm -hmm. or maybe it comes from mommy or daddy issues or maybe I really am an asshole maybe I need to work on that um, I think really just what we need is honesty and courage to get through this I I have I know guys that I there are decent human beings that have really stood up for for everyone and it has really made them reflect on their behavior. It, this has made me reflect on my own behavior mm -hmm. um, because I'm a touchy-feely person. So, and I'm like, God, you know, was that appropriate? Should I have asked? And it, and consent in general is such a complex issue, and it's not something that we're taught. It's not something that we really want to talk about because we still want the romance we still want the courting we still want that dynamic mm -hmm. but there is this different thing that is running through a lot of people's brains right now so I think that um, I I don't I personally when when people come to me in fear I find that disturbing because I don't want people to be in fear. I don't want men to be in fear. I don't want women to be in fear. What I want them to do is reflect mm -hmm. and talk and have conversations. And that's, um, it's really challenging. It's really well, challenging. That's what I like so much about the kink community is that there is a structure there. There is a structure part of there. This, part of the culture is that you have these conversations at the beginning of the relationship. You talk about your do's, your don'ts. It's not at all like Fifty Shades of Grey. Please don't ever read those books. Um, <laughs> and, and you discuss what you want to do, what you're willing to do, what you'd like to experiment with, and you get to really get into your own deep psychology yeah. and and have really honest conversations with your partners the way that everybody should be having and also having to have that conversation with yourself too so that's i'll challenge you on the 50 shades of gray because here's what they, they were shitty books they really i mean from from a literary standpoint I mean, all authors i know are like oh my god it's totally poor written she but, needs an editor but here but here's the thing i it brought to life a a different conversations have brought sex out into mm -hmm. the mainstream where so much of it has been right yeah like and in that, the darkness yeah, that's right yes. so that's the only thing I'll say about that some of us like did a, not realize it was in the darkness though we didn't know that there were people that were pressed so <laughs> many so, so that, that's why I, I have clients so I'm, I'm good with that so if we look at things and in some of the conversations I've had leading up to this and talking to people generationally so from a professional standpoint, a lot of the time I deal with having conversations about user experience from a technological standpoint. We talk about how we interface with technology, how we use these things, and 
there's no way we can't argue about the fact that this has changed our society. And so when I've talked to people I know that are in their teens and 20s versus those that are in their 30s, those that are in their 40s, that are those that are in their 50s, those that are older, if we look at the way that this has sort of affected how we interface with people, because if you're over a certain age, you're used to being able to have that dance, that conversation, a little bit of romance. And we were just talking about that interface, that romance with people between two human beings, three human beings, 12 human beings, um, furries. If you're having that conversation, if you're in that, that connection between two people, but yet we've seen technology affect how we actually build those relationships and from my opinion again my opinion this technology has also affected our ability to create a personal connection so that those people who have had to build those skills versus those who have not over time you know if we're in the tinder swipe left swipe right swipe up swipe to the left swipe to the king swipe to the you know paddle swipe to wherever if you're in that space, this has disconnected that dance of creating a personal chemical connection to it's a transaction. What do you guys think? That uh, social media has made relationships more transactional? Well, technology in general. Not so. just social media, dating apps. So if you're out oh, there, you're on, whether apps. it's Tinder, yeah. Grindr, Match. They're exhausting. So e-harmony um, if you're on these different platforms whether you're trying to date or you're trying to get a hookup it for me if you take away the personal chemistry I can't connect over at least not with pictures you know I wish dating apps were more like live journal and then I might have some success with them um, but yeah but I, but I think it, it there there's a couple of things there I think that when there is, when it comes to consent uh, being affected, I think that when you have um, the interaction not in person, you assume a certain level of, of familiarity, mm -hmm. uh, and then when you meet the person, then all of your senses are now online. So, um, and I think that some people assume that they're m much more familiar with a person mm -hmm. than they are, yes. and then things get a little muddled. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard, it, it's very, very interesting because when it comes to consent, I've heard the, well, she didn't say no. And then I've heard from uh, the other side of, well, he should know what I want. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, did you have a conversation? And and there's well, no. And 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 that and that's where there's, yeah, there's that, too much assumptions going there's on. There's a lot the, of assumptions. There's a sides, lot yes. of assumptions on both sides, yes. and I think that's where we get into a really difficult dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, because it and it and it you're because you're bringing all that you're bringing all your sh shit to the relationship. You're bringing your your belief systems. You're bringing your whatever it, I deal a lot with purity culture. So it's a, a you know I want this, but sex is dirty type. Yeah. Of, well, and of your and your point of view is limited by your own experiences exactly. and what the media you've been taking in. Exactly. And you assume that everyone else has seen all the things that you do and believe the way that you do. Right. And you don't even stop to think, oh, maybe this person is an individual with their own beliefs, their own media intake, and maybe we should talk about who we are actually instead of trying to play out these roles that we think we're supposed to be playing out. And social media, I think, is is prompted a lot more of let this is the way I present myself publicly. This right. is what, it, it's the illusion. It's the keeping right. up with the Joneses amplified by a hundred because I have taken. 20 selfies and I've used Facetune and I've used Snapseed and I've made myself look X, Y, and Z um, to be attracted to the other person. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it makes things more difficult. And that I hear it's exhausting to date. It was exhausting to date and, and I am not a young person as you probably can notice. It was exhausting to date like in my 20s and, and, and as a teenager and whatnot, I can only imagine what, um, and, and I've gotten feedback 
from the younger sect now because it you're just you up level it a, a bit from the the um, the illusion standpoint. I'm not even sure if I should talk about my most recent dating experiences. Um, we're, we're supposed to be not hating here. Um, just <laughs> elevate, elevate. <laughs> learning experiences. Uh, yeah, we call it, we call those learning experiences, or the people you buried the backyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people getting too many scripts from porn. I think. Just oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, or or thinking that porn is reality, right? So yes. there is a lady by the name of Cindy Gallup. And she has a site called Make Love Not Porn that oh, she yes. started because, and I love her mm-hmm. yeah, so much, awesome. so much, because it's the, hey, um, little clue, that shit's not real. And um, for you out there that think it's real, it's not. And for you that think, oh, no one would think it's real, I, I have personally coached people that actually thought that was the way you engaged the other sex and 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 it was a very difficult thing to to break um well even if they don't think it's even if they don't consciously think it's real we as our in our psychology and the way we learn just if you watch something more enough enough we're we are in tension yeah we we just want to emulate it automatically that's how humans learn in the first place and especially if you come from where Sex was not taught, or or yeah, yeah. If you're starting that, just, nothing, that just really and you have no it. counter messages or anything. It like really that. amplifies it. Right. So, yes. And I'm going to cut in here because again, we want this to be a dialogue. Yeah. We have a, our first question, and we'll we'll be taking questions off and on, and I'm going to be cutting in, and because there's some things I want to make sure we discuss. But we have our first qual- we have our first caller, and you're from. Uh, I'm from Florida by the bases. So I'm obviously going to be jaded by certain aspects of being around military bases. Um, when the digital agers finally confide in their elders, that and since I'm older, that would be me. Um, I have after to right here too, it's okay. Yeah. Whenever you get over the shell shock of what they have done or are planning to do, how do you continue to? How do you approach their mentality versus the fact that I'm? Probably more than likely going to be more conservative than that. Like they've Can, they've opened up and they've confided in you, and now you have to react to the situation you have no understanding of how they have gotten there, related to these apps that are seeming impersonal, and they're now in this perilous relationship. Or so. so, so let me make sure I understand the question. Yes. Um, or restate it here. So, if you're in engaging with another person across an app. No, no, no. A a younger generation comes okay. to you and says, "I have X problem. You've never, I've never dealt with X problem, but now they've confided in you, and now you got to react to it. How do you consult them on that?" So, how can you give me an example of what the problem is? Or well, I, I let really me let me cut to. in very generically for a minute. So, old guy, um, I, but. I've coached a lot of kids over the years that start, I've known since they were little kids, that are now in their teens and their 20s, and I'm loath to say it, even one or two in their pushing 30. Um, but I've known them, I've known their families, I've known their parents, and these are kids that have long since reached out to me at a much gener- younger generation, and their families are, you know, they, they were like, yeah, yeah, if he calls you, it's fine. You can tell them whatever you think is best, which I question their judgment, but we'll go with the idea. I frequently go and say, look, the first thing is, how well do you understand the other person's opinion? How well are you connecting on an emotional basis? And do you have empathy? So if somebody, because I will tell you, there's a lot of these kids that call me, and I deal with a lot of very high functioning, in some case, autistic kids very brilliant people so I'm, I'm dealing with some people who already have some social awkwardness that already have some of these sorts of things and it's like okay can you empathize with the situation because the part of the problem I've noticed is from a technological generation we lose empathy we lose connection so the first thing is are you connecting at an emotional level or is it just damn she's hot 
Um, so it's the first question is how well are you connecting? Now I'll pass this to my panelists. Well, and the other thing is um, when when someone I engage with, my first conversation with them and my first questions around how are they, how solid are they within themselves? Because if you are if you know who you are and if you know what you want and what your intent is, then that drives a different direction versus if you're coming from a people pleaser standpoint or if you're trying to, it, it, it changes the entire dynamic. And it, if you are very solid within yourself and know what you want and what your intent is, you're significantly less likely to be triggered by another person's actions and even within a younger set all the way up to 60 um, that is probably the first thing that I instill is having those types of conversations like that. Um, so I actually like that question because hopefully one day I will be a, a foster mother or adoptive parent to kids so how do you counsel Will you adopt me no, and pay my bar no. tabs. You haven't been kicked out of your house by your parents. So, no. um, so, how, so how would I counsel, uh, counsel a kid who's dealing with issues I don't understand because of the media, social, digital things? Um, so he, we're all humans, and even though they're living in a completely different world than the one I grew up in, we're all still people, we're all still humans, you're, you're still having the same generic adolescent issues. Mm -hmm. It's just through a different uh, platform now. I would try to engage with them about these things that you don't understand and learn what it means to them, um, what actually is going on, listen to them, um, mm -hmm. let them tell their side, and, and then just, and then start from there, you know. All right, do we have another okay. question before yeah. I go to my next topic? Okay, yeah. I know we've got a couple. Please go ahead. Um, thank you so much for having this. Um, this is really an amazing panel. Um, I agree with everything you've said. Um, I think it should be starting conversations. I don't know if it is. Like, I think I mostly talk about this with my male friends, which is unfortunate probably, but. Thank you. Mm -hmm, sure, um, <laughs> but I wonder, of the people that are like, you know, Weinstein, Cosby, versus say like Garrison Keillor where it seems like an inappropriate hug okay. versus you know rape and it seems like you know other than Garrison Keillor isn't going to jail that in some extent everyone's sort of being treated the same same way for things that are very different behaviors and I'm glad this is happening and I think it should be happening but I'm kind of wonder what the ultimate how this is going to eventually keep going forward and proceeding does that make sense to you uh, yes it does because I think that this is one of the subjects that that this particular movement is shying away from and it's called a spectrum yeah. right yes we have a very this is an extremely complex issue and it is a very wide spectrum and 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 this is why I'm very passionate about this particular subject is because um, we don't take into account a spectrum. We like to have everything be very, very uniform. And I think that that is wrong. Um, I think that that is causing a lot of the churn and the fear, um, especially with the, the guys that I deal with. Um, because I think there is this huge gray area because I, I think there are people that know that they are doing things that are inappropriate and coercive and wrong. Uh, Weinstein is probably a, a good example of that in my opinion because I mean he hired ex Mossad agents for intimidation practices and, and etc. Um, but I have personally dealt with men who brought me examples or we talked through things that did not have the awareness until I walked them through it of, okay, now I understand, or maybe I need to think about that or, or whatnot. So I do think that there is a spectrum. I don't think all things are equal. Um, and I think that from, from a, a female standpoint, um, some of the things that I don't like seeing is trauma one-upping, trigger warning, yeah. 
just so you guys know. Um, I have personally experienced trauma one-upping, which is your trauma is not as traumatic as my trauma because I went through X. Or your trauma is not as tra tra traumatizing as mine because you recovered faster. I've been, I, I've been sexually assaulted and I've been judged because I had, went to therapy and I got over it faster than another person. And I'm like, really, that we're, we're participate, that's what we're doing now? And I think that those, they don't collectively move us forward. And I think that, um, I think that we're losing forgiveness. We're losing the fact that someone did this, uh, depending on what it was, they may have made some really crude remarks. Um, I'll go ahead and bring out the James Gunn thing. I think that James Gunn made some shock jock type remarks and he, by all accounts, and again, this is through the media lens, so we take that with a grain of salt, right? Um, grew from his experience, because I do think that people can grow, but suffer the consequences. And then you have someone who has done the, couch, the casting couch and or drugged people and taken advantage of them and whatnot, which is, is another extreme. So I think that there is a significant spectrum on this issue that a lot of people are not talking about. We're also not talking about all the people on both sides that participated in a pseudo consent because there is this when you are in a position of power, wealth, and privilege, uh, influence, you have a certain level of charisma. And when you are in, I experienced, I, I was in DC for about five years. So you, when you're in the presence of that person, you might feel drawn in and then have regret later. So that also, or, or if you went and all the, the people, because there are a significant amount of women that actually consented to Harvey Weinstein. That's the reason why he was able to do this for so long. And the shame that those women are feeling right now, because God knows they're not going to come forward. They're like, oh my God, what does that make me? And the self-loathing that's on, on that, that's a very, that's also part of that spectrum. So it's, I do believe that there is a spectrum. I do believe that there are people that are that can acknowledge and go, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, that was inappropriate, thank you for telling me, but I think that's part of the dialogue we have to have. Do I think that every person's career should be destroyed, male or female, because this also happens to a lot more men, a lot more men than we're, that then than come to light. And we also like to brush off the men a little bit more. I had a conversation with an, a gentleman um, last week who's like, women touch me all the time. I'm a personal trainer and they touch me all the time. They know I'm married and they're, they're ma they make passes at me. They do, they sh I show up to their house to train them. They're in lingerie. It happens to me all the time. Mm -hmm. But because I'm a former football player, I can't talk about that makes me very uncomfortable, but I'm not allowed to talk about that. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot from my male coworkers, um, women flashing their breasts and things like that, and yeah. Um, the two things uh, jumped to my mind with your question, uh, one was Al Franken, uh, yeah, that was not, I, I knew, I saw it coming in the distance, everyone's just, they get so, they don't think, they want to pile on, they, they're, they get fearful, they're like, well, I have to fire this person, I have to make this gigantic big public statement, or else everybody will think that I'm a rapist too, and right. don't want that. And the other one was the uh, Orville episode, where everybody's, yeah, tried the court of public opinion, <laughs> and that was excellent, so excellent, because that's exactly what we're doing. We're, we're not having any conversations. Right. We're just automatically, you're guilty, go to jail, don't pass go, you know, and that's it, and now a wonderful man's career is destroyed because he did stupid shit. Um, so, yeah, Sorry. we definitely need to think more. We've okay. got a question yeah. over here. Okay, so uh, one of the things I was thinking about the spectrum is that, like, if you're a guy like me, okay, uh, 
I want to stay 100% on the good side. You mm -hmm. know, I don't want to like stray into any of the gray area, okay? But what uh, happens, I think, is like when something like, you know, a hug becomes something that's in the gray area, uh, like that means that that's uh, more and more, I guess, normal good things that I'd like to do get into the gray area and that's frustrating. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it's, so, it's frustrating I, and confusing. So let me actually cut in a minute as old guy. I'm, I can be touchy feely. I'm, you know, like say with those people that I'm close to, my friends, everything else, give them a hug, give them a kiss, keep moving forward. It's all about what's that relationship you have with the person and what's the, uh, it used to be implied consent. Yeah, that doesn't work anymore. And it, there's still a certain degree of that. And, and I'm an ass. I, I openly admit that. But at the same time, I will also openly do anything I can to defend people. And, uh, you know, I'm a big boy. I can defend myself. You know, harassment comes both ways. I, you know, standing in a kilt, I do a lot of events. I do a lot of conventions. I do a lot of speaking. You stand in there as a guest. And the next thing that happens is, you know, the girl comes by and slaps you on the ass. I've long since lived, learned to go and say, okay, great. Move on. If you're not buying me a drink at the bar, let's keep going. But from a consent standpoint, if it's, it depends on the relationship you have with the person. And it's a completely legitimate question in context of where we are. Because the risk is where we are is now the next thing becomes, hi, my name is so-and-so, can I give you a hug? It used to be that. Now are we down to signed contracts? Are we down to digital contracts between? Yes, the hug can be sideways. Now can the hug be face, face forward? Oh, well, can that hug now actually involve physical body, bodily contact? And I know I'm kind of going to an absurdity, but we're kind of going that way. And if you look at some of what the apps are doing in terms of the technology, when you start introducing people in a virtual sense that have not physically been introduced, you're actually seeing some of those ap applications now having a digital consent step by step. But so, I mean, consent is very different today from what it used to be, and part of that is because we as people don't trust each other anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's, it's not just, um, silence is not consent. It never really has been consent, but in a lot of cases it was assumed to be consent. Um, and I come from a standpoint of there's accountability on all genders, no matter how you identify as being able to have a voice of, in fact, I, I guess I, so I had my Me Too moment before my Me Too panel. About two hours ago. About two hours ago, talking about the Me Too panel. I was in the Ritz bar, I was having a drink, I was alone, um, and a rather inebriated gentleman sat beside me and he started having a conversation with me. And I was like, I'm just here having my glass of wine, please, you know. And he's like, why are you here? You know, he's one of the football guys, so he's just one of the straights, as we call them at Dragon Con, right? And, um, and he offered to buy me another drink. And I'm like, no, I've got to speak in a couple hours. I, you know, I want to pace myself, even though it's Saturday night. Thank you very much, blah, blah, blah. And he kept going. And then it was, what are you speaking on? And then I thought, oh, here we go. So, <laughs> and I told him, and then it was, it, and then it was like, well, it, and he was in his probably mid fifties and he was, and then he did the reach and the touching thing. And I'm like, oh, this is some irony, <laughs> but, but it, it's, it's, it's that type of thing. I think that, um, I think what people don't pay attention to, especially when they're getting to a dating situation, is at least they're so in their head because they're trying to interact with the person, is they don't pay a they don't pay attention to verbal cues and they don't pay attention to energy. And I think that goes back to I do think it's a, a lot of it has to do with confidence because if you're confident, you're not as much in their head and you're just sort of trying there to have fun. But I think it comes down to 
if you ever have a question, instead of hugging, put your hand out. It, it more come from an invitation standpoint or have, or, or, or take the risk of vulnerability because you will always come on the positive side rather than on the negative side in that regard. Um, so I'm actually really big into the whole asking thing. I, I, I actually am I'm kind of bad with verbal, uh, with social cues myself. So I'm always just, can I hug you? No, and if somebody asks me, can I hug you? I'm like, no, that's okay, thanks, thanks anyway. Um, but, I don't know, I, that's about, I don't know. Um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> what, but, oh, actually, I, no, no, I, I got to get back. I, I think back. it goes back to how complex it is. Yeah, I was going to say, um, the thing is, a lot of times people are approach someone and they have all these assumptions in their head. They have their, their script in their head. They have their coaching in their head. And they're so focused on what's in their own head that they're almost not paying any attention at all to the person that they're talking yeah. to. Yeah. And, and they're imagining things are happening because it's all this coaching in their head. Yeah. And I think that you just get out of your damn head. Look at the person in front of you and what they're what they're giving you or yep. not giving you. Because energy doesn't lie. It 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 really doesn't. And and body language really. Yeah, now body language. Yeah, you you should be um you should be able to tell if someone's pulling away from you just by looking at them. So yeah. So all right, uh, before I go to the next one, I think we have one more question, or we may have more. I have one. Um, so with the lack of a treatment spectrum for all of these incidents, do you think that this willingness to paint everybody with a broad brush is related to those little casual microaggressions like the uninvited dick pic or a oh woman Lord. getting slapped on the ass in the subway and not being able to see who it was that was grinding up against her. Do you think that those things are related? I, I do think that there is some buildup on it, because I think that's a, one of the reasons why we see such the large um, almost mom mentality around that because it's like, I am sick of this bullshit. And gentlemen, please, <laughs> just don't do the dick pic. Please do not do that unless you're doing sexting, which, hey man, I'm all about the sexting, but don't send an unsolicited dick pic because two, one of two things are happening. Either A, they're like, oh God, why, 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 why? They're either mortified or they're sitting there with their girlfriends going, well, I got another one. And uh, I'm really not impressed. And I will tell you, I have received two dick pics in the last year, and I haven't been on the dating scene in, in, in a little while, right? And, I'm like, and, and these are for two men that know I'm married, and I'm like, why did you think this was a good idea? Did you want me to rate you? What, I, I, I don't understand, but no, please don't do the dick pic unless you're in a sexting conversation, then that's a whole different other panel. And um, I'm, I'm going to make one more comment here just to warn you guys that are sending out the dick pics. Um, I, I know young ladies that will do things like put googly eyes on them and yes, then post them and send happens. them around. Um, they'll put a unicorn horn on it. They'll start putting ratings on them. And they're and not the ratings good. are never good. Never good. <laughs> um, Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I usually use Richard Nixon, but that's because I'm old. I would, re I would respond to it if you sent me a picture of Nightwing. I would respond favorably to that. Um, yeah, Props especially your creativity. Yeah, especially if um, um, Starfire's in the picture with him. Um, so, uh, okay, yeah. So there's a lot of frustration and internal anger going on yeah. on both sides in my opinion yeah. you've got the incels on one side and then you've got the overly distressed women on the other side and I feel like everyone is walking around like a ball of rage these days yes. over something and it's almost kind of healthy that maybe we're kind of maybe finally addressing it we're just addressing it in unhealthy ways yeah. but at least now maybe some of it is getting out 
Um, and if we don't, if we don't get it out, we can't see it and we can't talk about it. Yeah. Um, but I think most people need to really start examining themselves more. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like the Greek aphorism, you need to know yourself. Mm -hmm. That's more than just, I don't know, knowing if you're the one or not. It's knowing what you're thinking, knowing why you're thinking it, knowing what you're feeling and why you're feeling it and acknowledging those thoughts and those feelings. And it's okay. They're just thoughts and they're just feelings. You don't need to go act on them. You don't need to be hateful to someone or assume that someone is having some sort of motivation towards you that maybe they're not. Maybe they're just a little too drunk or maybe they have no social skills or maybe they're barely even noticing you. But because you've got all this anger that you've been carrying around all day, you automatically assume that that person is attacking you. And so, yeah. That's well, and that goes to back to um, another, I think, thing on the spectrum is is when we consume adult beverages or engage in um, adult half-naked geek parties it's something along the, uh, those lines <laughs> um, there is accountability on all sides regardless right and and I, I I really do like your your king community analogy because I think that there is a lot to be gained by that um, from, from acknowledgement of consent or whatnot. But but I see the, well, I was drunk, but he should have X, Y, and Z. Well, he was drunk too, so you want his behavior to be perfect mm -hmm. and yours to be, you can do whatever you want. That's not right either, right? So I think that everybody has to take accountability for themselves. Well, personal responsibility. Personal if, you're, responsibility if you're in public and you're drinking so much that you have not in control of your actions, then you're not an adult and you need to go home to your exactly. parents and, you know, relearn some things. Yeah. Um, oh, we got the 10 minutes. So let us, let us pass the, oops. the magic box around. All right. Oh. Um, yeah, I got it. Uh, ultimately I'm going to ask, how do you get the conversation started? But when it comes to courtship and, you know, dating and all of that, some women like to be pursued. Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of men, like this fellow over here, want to be the nice guy. You know, there's so many gray areas, I'm just going to stay away from there. And the woman's going like, he's not willing to touch me. Uh, he's not interested in me. What, that, what am yes. I doing wrong? <laughs> that, that, that does happen. I've had that conversation with both sides of the house as well. So, and I think this is also a generational difference. Because right now, if we look at things from a generational standpoint, talking as the old guy who hadn't had to deal with dating and God hated it enough when it was having to do it. Um, when we're going out and trying to date and you're trying to go through that, as you refer to it, the dance mm -hmm. of courtship, we don't do that anymore. No. If you're over a certain age, you, you remember and you understand that cor the courtship, you understand whether that is I'm going out to a bar, I'm going out to an event, I'm going something to meet people face to face. But yet, if you're under a certain age, the, the threshold for that is nominal. Mo so much of it is digital. So my introduction to you is, hi, that's a hot pick. I'm not sure if that's you or not. Can I send you a picture of Richard, Richard Nixon with horns on? <laughs> so if I'm doing that and I'm sending that over and I'm 20, I'll get a different reaction than I'm on christianmingle.com and let me show you my naughty side. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> go ahead cut me off <laughs> that, went, that went through me for a loop that, that went through me a loop you know what I find is very very interesting though is we still want seduction as human beings mm -hmm. we still want the romance we still want the tinglys mm -hmm. we still want all of that but we have risk involved now. That at a level that we've probably not been, that have, we, there was always risk involved, but now it's at a, a different level. And I think that answers your question, is someone has to be, it's like you're in a chess game, and someone has to be willing to show their hand. And I think that, um, I do think that men are a little bit at a disadvantage on that because we raise young men as to you need to, to be very this, that, and the other. And I think that's bullshit. I think that one of the most attractive things 
that the male can do is is be willing to expose himself like that and take that risk. Um, I think that what helps a person in that regard is knowing that even if he takes that risk, he'll be fine and and, and be able to, if he is rejected or whatnot, because no one likes rejection. It doesn't matter who the hell you are. You just don't like it. And it doesn't matter where it comes from. But I think that, um, I think that in a great relationship, it's always worth it. So. Um. I think. Well, are you on your first it, it, date or your third date, yeah. or you, or how? I mean, it's it's all situational and yeah, contextual. It is. That's the reason uh, why this is such a big spectrum. There are no, there are no, there can't be any hard and fast rules because everyone is individuals, mm -hmm. and. But that's the thing, is that there are people who like to chase, there are people who like to be chased, yep. there are people who don't want to go through all that rigmarole and just be like, I think you're attractive, let's see if we can get this on. And the point is that you need to know what you are yeah. and then find someone that compliments you. Right. And don't go into the situation with any of these preconceived notions at all. Just try to find someone that's willing to be as honest with you as you, you are with are yourself with and so, with them. Uh, and I'm going to put something out there. So. If we look at music and art as a reflection of where we are as a people, there's a Christmas song. What is it? The whole oh, baby yeah. is cold oh, outside. God, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. You think I might have made a note? Um, the old scripts. The old scripts. But that song is about the dance, and I saw a lot of posts at Christmas about this is about slipping a Mickey and drugging the woman, and you know I no. drug her in by no. caveman hair and all the rest of this. And then yet you listen to what our popular music is at the time, which they quoted, which was all about slapping on the ass on the dance floor. And I'm going. Or if you look in most of Selena Gomez's songs, which I, I love, but they're mm -hmm. all about. Exactly. I'll wait and for you. I'll do Waverly this. Place. And I'm like. Really, people? Yeah, the hypersexualization of adolescent girls is kind of a problem. It, it really is. It really um, is. Yes, um, ma'am. Okay, I'm feeling kind of like an outlier here. Um, I often tell people that the best thing that my parents ever did for me was tell me nothing about sex. Um, because I figured it all out by myself, which meant that I've never, I've never th felt that sex was dirty. I never felt that it was shameful. I never felt that I had to be pursued. If I liked you, I liked you. If I didn't like you, I didn't like you, and you could move on. I'm with you. I'm, I'm hearing you. Yes. And, 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 and I really appreciate your comments things. about the kink community because it was not until um, I got involved in that that I realized that um, the clubs, those the clubs that I was in, were the safest places that I felt as a woman. Mm -hmm. Because right, yeah. every man there knew what the boundaries were. They knew there, what the boundaries were. There's a lot of were. judgment in that area, and it is one of the best ex exhibits of consent mm -hmm. as far as teaching. Sexual negotiation. Oh, exactly. absolutely. It's, it's absolutely. all of that. Yeah. But as a society, we are so about sex, we won't have the conversation. And I have referred people to that. I'm like, go look at this. Because you will learn a lot. Well, well the, yeah. the gay folks, we like to, we, we get to negotiate quite a bit too. Because <laughs> again, going in, there are no automatic scripts. You don't assume one person's a top or a bottom or male or feminine or anything like that. You just, you got to learn, you're forced to learn what each person likes and doesn't like on and, an individual and, basis. And I think that's nice. One of the things that's, that is a great disservice to women in Amazing. this society is that we're taught to be ashamed. Oh, sex is dirty. Are we? we I see I missed that class. About it. I'm so glad. And we shouldn't say what we want and we shouldn't say what we don't want. And we should always be nice. And we should not try not to hurt people's feelings. 
people have a feelings. lady in the street mm-hmm. and a slut in the the yeah. sheets. Be polite. That kind of don't thing. don't like, hurt his feelings. You know let him win. But I but I want you to be all this freak in the in the bed. Yes, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, that yeah. is our society. That yeah, is, I so. I don't really subscribe to those <laughs> belief systems. So. I love that shirt, by the way. But yeah, um, and I just he's never, so proud of that. <laughs> and I just found that it's so much easier if you tell people up front yeah I like you I think you're interesting let's talk some more Mm -hmm. or no you're not really quite my type you might have better luck moving on and when you have conversations with your girlfriends do you convey that here's here's the thing that I find very very interesting is I have a fair amount of girlfriends that look at me when I have conversations like this and like you you talk about stuff like that so I think that there are more women that need to have conversations with their girlfriends about being a lot more direct Mm -hmm. with their partners about what they want oh yeah and what they desire yeah I I, and be unapologetic and stop shaming each other over exactly Exactly, absolutely yeah I always talk to my girlfriends that that we can open the door for our partners whomever right. the yeah. partners yeah. are yeah. and then I think that men need more safe spaces where they can convey their vulnerability so that they can have different types of conversations yeah and I think that collectively would move us and then when we move into the trans area and it, and all the other different genders they all, we all need safe fucking spaces to talk about sex mm-hmm. and relationships mm-hmm. and intimacy mm-hmm. and, 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 and different ways of expressing ways sexual of and romantic exactly. intimacy. Exactly. Well, I'm, well, I think one of the things that women need to um, be more cognizant of is that men are not just walking erections. <laughs> I know. They kind of have Not feelings. after the age of 25. <laughs> So, <laughs> but they, they, yes, they, yeah. there are, there are feelings there. There yeah, are vulnerability. There. You don't get feelings till you're like 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, and, and that, that is, that is why I do what I do is so that, they, that I can hold that space for men so that they learn how to express themselves in a, in a better manner in that regard. Well, guys, I, oh God. I we're already done. We, we've had a quick hour. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody. Has... <laughs> Scott's I like, can yell. I want to get to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you to everybody that has come out tonight. I want to say thank you for everybody that has stayed for, through an hour of this and how quickly it's gone. It's actually gone much quicker than I thought. I wish we could have gotten to more of you guys' questions. If you found this useful and beneficial, please rate us on the app. Please you know, rate us for the panel. I'm not soliciting for us, but please say you want more of this content on the panel. I think Scott would, would agree. You know, I don't like sending feedback. He's like, just give me feedback. And apparently you guys keep putting us at you know, the middle of the night on Saturday nights, and you know, as long as somebody's bringing me alcohol, I'll, I'll talk. Um, but no, I want to thank all of you very personally for coming out and staying and asking questions and being respectful and for being here for this dialogue. So the next thing I'm going to do is challenge you to go do your own research. Yeah. Go talk to your communities. I know how difficult this is to talk to your own families, to talk to, to people who are going to challenge it. And also while we all get introspective about things we've done in our past, it's not about guilt. It's about what do you do going forward? Don't be an asshole. And thank you for coming on and adding so much. Thank you for asking me. This was great. This is my first panel. Thank you guys for being nice.